I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV. And we in here. So check this out, bro. Before we get going on our video, smash the like, subscribe to the channel, share the video, turn on your notifications. Go follow me on Twitter, AKO Boxing 86 TV. If you got a breakdown or a prediction you want me to do, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com. It's the email address. And don't forget about our live shows. We live every Wednesday and Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. You can also catch me live every Sunday morning with the singing OG KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday morning is 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. But let's get it popping. Let's get into our video. And today, we got another fight prediction. I'm bringing y'all a 10-round flyweight fight prediction for Jose Lito Velasquez versus Christopher Rosales. Velasquez is um, 29 years old out of Mexico. He's an orthodox fighter. Five foot four with a 68 inch reach, 15 wins, no losses, one draw with 10 wins by way of knockout. Then you got Rosales, 28 years old out of Nicaragua, five foot six, 71 inch reach, orthodox fighter, 34 year, 34 wins, six losses, 21 knockouts, and he's been knocked out one time in his career. Look, man, Rosales is extremely long for 112 pounds. To put this into perspective for you, he has a 71 inch arm reach. That would put him with the same type of arm reach as Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. Um, you know, guys like that, bro, fighting that lightweight. This man fighting down at 112 pounds, and he got 71-inch arm reach, longest shit for the weight. Um, he gets caught tall a lot, though, because he's also pretty tall for the weight. It says he's 5'6", but he fights straight up. He fights straight up and down, but he tries to fight behind his jab, um, he, and, he try, and he'll go to war from you with you, as most Nicaraguan fighters will. The issue that he has is that when he gets to going to war with these stockier, shorter um, guys that have a lower center of gravity. He's slapping punches on the inside. They're landing clean, plus his chin is up in the air. And so um, it ends up it ends up not looking good. Bro. It, ends up not, it ends up not being good for him, and that's why he ends up getting outboxed a lot and losing fights. That's why he dropped six fights to sharper opponents. I mean, like, y Yaffe beat him. Um, Charlie Edwards beat him, and then he lost to Julio Cesar Martinez because they were able to beat him to the punch, land and clean the shots. In the case of Julio Cesar Martinez, he did stop. Um, he's the guy that stopped um, Rosales, but Rosales usually gets beat to the punch with exchanges on the inside, and he doesn't fight well enough off his back foot behind his jab, and he's not slick to where he's some outboxer being able to take advantage of his 71-inch reach at flyweight. Then you got Joselito Velasquez. Outstanding amateur pedigree, 2016 Mexican Olympian. Had a hiccup with a draw where he was in, in Mexico. Fought a guy that was extremely aggressive in an eight-round fight and made it very nasty and very ugly for Velasquez. He got away from his boxing, went to war with the dude. They gave some, took some, gave some, took some. He ended up getting a draw in that fight. But when he's able to box, he has a nice, strong power jab. Great at countering with that left hook. Um, nice one too. He can move well in the ring. Velasquez can be a real player in these lighter weight classes like 112, 115. He has world championship skills if he's able to put it together and learn how to keep boxing and not always feel the need to get into a brawl, get into a war. His jab, his movement, his counter punching ability specifically, um, the catch and counter with the left hook are all things that will bode well for him because he does carry really good power. Um, and when he's able to land his shots cleanly. So, overall in this fight, I'm going with Velasquez. I think he's the better boxer. He's the one with the Olympic pedigree. He's the one that when they get into those exchanges on the inside, his shorter, crisper, non-slapping punches will not only get there faster, but I think they're going to hurt more, catch the eyes of the judges. Rosales is very tough, um, but I think the punishment that he has taken um, is going to is going kind of show up in this fight, and I got Velasquez by a late stoppage, similar to what, um, similar to what, what's the dude name, um, Julio Cesar Martinez was able to do to him, he gonna stop him, he's going to, um, stop him somewhere between round 9 and round 11, I see it being the left hook up top, I don't think he'll stop him with the left hook to the body, I think he's gonna catch him on the chin, wobble him, hurt him, and, um, and, and, and just kind of, you know what I'm saying, Really, really do some damage to him. So Velasquez is my pick um, by stoppage between round 8 and round 10. I'm changing it as we talk. Between round 8 and round 10, I ain't going to bore y'all with a long prediction, trying to make it longer than what it is. In the case of Christopher Rosales, 
He too tall, not good enough on the inside. He's going to slap with his punches. Too easy to hit. Doesn't fight to his length good enough. And Velasquez is going to be able to take advantage of that, work his way inside off of his power jab. And then when they get on the inside, he's going to land the crisper shots and, lead and, and win the exchanges by far on the inside. And he's going to win by a stoppage between round 8 and round 10. That's my prediction. What's yours? Let me know in the comment section. Comment down below. Smash the like. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Turn on your notifications. And go follow me on Twitter at KOBoxing86TV. And if you got a breakdown or a prediction, knock out boxing 86 at yahoo.com. Appreciate y'all watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And with that, we out of here. Peace out.